Avast, ye scurvy dogs! It's Stefan here to play some Pathfinder Adventure Card Games, Skull and Shackles. Let's get started here. Let's choose our location. Um, Alright, we'll send Jarell to the Lonely Island because she has allies as her preferred type, so most likely she has allies. And then the closing cost for this is to banish an ally. And, well, since I've never played this before, I probably should send them both to the same location. Let's just do that for now, because this is, this is the first time playing this. Okay, so when you start, um, you flip over a card from the Blessing deck at the beginning of every character's turn. And it's important, the card that's here, because some some cards allow you to use this effect. So this is a Blessing of Savannah, and we're, we can ignore the check to acquire because we're not encountering this card, it's just part of the Blessing deck. So we look down below at the powers. Discard this card to add one die to any check, that's if you have the card. Discard this card to add two dice to any non-combat intelligence or charisma check. So that's actually really useful. Because if you have a Blessing of the Gods card, like Jarell, you can use this card down on the bottom. You may treat you may instead treat this card as if it had the same powers as the top card of the Blessings discard pile. So this Blessing of Savannah would help us to do those uh, closing checks that have intelligence checks. Only the middle one that's different. So that's good to keep in mind. We're going to say Jarell's going first. And she has a weapon here. This is a rapier. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength or melee skill plus 2d4. You may additionally discard this card to add another 1d4. If you aren't proficient with weapons, the difficulty of this check is increased by 4. So she is proficient with weapons. And you notice that it has some traits on the side there. Sword, melee, piercing, finesse, swashbuckling, and basic. Uh, basic means that it is one of the cards that you can pull out of the box to make your deck. I just use the recommended decks for, for both of these. Okay, so what we do is we're going to take the, f not the whole deck, and take the first card off of this deck and flip it over and encounter it. Barroom Brawl. So this is a barrier. This is a bane. It's a, it's a bad thing. The difficulty to defeat this barrier is increased by the adventure deck number. Okay, there isn't one. Each character at this location encounters this barrier. Each character that, d that does not defeat the barrier is dealt one plus the adventure deck number, if any, in combat damage. If any character defeats the barrier, it is defeated. So check to defeat is strength, melee, dexterity, five. And that basically means that I get to choose out of those three, whichever one is more favorable for me, which die I want to roll. So Jarell's the one encountering it, and we look on Jarell's card here for dexterity, and she has a d10. And a d10 is pretty solid for getting, what was it, a 5? So if she wanted to add a blessing, she has blessings she could play to make that 2d10, but I'm going to feel okay with just rolling 1d10. So we're going to do that. Let's shift over to our roll screen, and we've got a d10 here. And we got a nine. Let's switch back. All right. So we defeated that, and then, and the text said that if any character defeats the barrier, it is defeated. So um, Lyrian doesn't even have to encounter it. So we're going to take this over here, and this will go back into the barriers deck, like so. All right. Now that was her entire turn, basically. You get to um, you get to move, give a character at your location and uh, a card, um, and then explore. But there are other cards like the Blessing of the Gods. So you can third one down says discard this card to explore your location. So you could do that. But uh, allies generally have that as well. Discard this card to explore your location. Add the swashbuckling trait to combat checks during this exploration. We already have that, but that's okay and discard this card non-combat checks. So I could discard either ally to explore again. 
I'm not going to though because remember the closing cost for this is to banish an ally. And we're just getting going here, so we're gonna switch over to uh, Lyrian. Oops. I'm gonna pull a card off the Blessings deck, flip it over. It's a Blessing of the Gods, so it really has no effect. Plus she doesn't have any Blessings of the Gods right now. So she's gonna take a card off of here and flip it over. And it is a longbow. So this is a boon. This is a weapon that she could attempt to acquire. And the check to acquire is dexterity or ranged five. So she's the right person to acquire this. Because she has a d8 plus three for her ranged check. All right, d8 plus three. So she really only has to get a two on her die roll on her d8. So let's see how that goes. Choose a d8. And she gets a six. So she can acquire that card. And that goes directly into her hand. Now, what's nice about this is, let's see, let's, let's read about it. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your dexterity or range skill plus your strength die. If you aren't proficient with weapons, the difficulty is increased by four. If you are proficient with weapons, you may discard this card to add 1d4 to any combat check in another location, which is a great thing you can help someone else at, at another location just by using your, your bow. Now, let's see what her strength is. Only d4. So this isn't really a good weapon for her because it's her dex plus a strength die. That d4 is not going to help too much. That's okay. Now she has an ally. She could um, actually, no, she can't. Recharge this card to examine the top card of your location deck. Well, that's an interesting effect. So recharge means that you put it on the bottom of your, your deck. Um, and so it's going to come back into your hand rather than you're not playing it away. So that's what we, well, let's use this. Um, examine the top card of your location deck. So we will pull off a card, which I seem to have trouble just pulling one card. And guess what? It's another barrier. Man overboard. It's a dexterity seven check. If undefeated, display this card who display this card next to a random character. At the start of each character's turn, the character next to this card must succeed at a constitution or fortitude seven check to banish this card. Otherwise that character must bury the top card of their deck. Okay, so that's a pretty bad effect. And this is like persistent. So we're gonna wanna beat that. Now we're just gonna put it back on top. Now this card is gonna be recharged. So we'll flip that over. We're gonna pull the whole of this deck and put it on top of there. And now that card is at the bottom of the deck. And now that's the end of her turn. Remember she has a hand size of four, so now we're back down to four cards. So even though we gained a card, we don't have to do anything because we've just put a card back in there. So this is her, her hand. And now we're gonna pull another blessing off. It's another blessing of the gods, put it up here. And um, we're gonna go back to Jarell. Okay, so we know what the card is. It's Man Overboard, Dexterity 7. So, Dexterity, she's a D10. Now, I really want to make this check. So I'm going to play a Blessing of the Gods into my discard pile. So now I can roll 2D10. And hopefully that's going to be enough. There's one, there's two. Uh-oh. Okay. Lucky. This is a good thing that we rolled two dice then, because the first one came up three. So that means we beat this, and it goes back into the barrier's deck. Okay, so she's just played a card. That's going to be the end of her turn, because we're not going to expand any, expend any allies. So now she resets her hand size back to five. Take this over here, and flip it over. And it's another Blessing of the Gods, so great. Wow, I really have trouble with the pulling one card off of there. Another blessing of the gods. So we're back to Lyrian, and she's going to encounter the top card of the location. Okay, and it is a henchman, a hammerhead shark. Combat 9. So it can't be evaded, that's okay. We've got a couple weapons, let's see what we've got. A dagger, 
For your combat check, reveal this card to use your dexterity or range skill plus 1d4. You may additionally recharge this card to add another 1d4. Uh, it's not great. Not a great effect. Let's see what this set. This is Sap. Discard this card to evade a monster whose highest difficulty to defeat is 12 or lower, but as we've just seen with the Hammerhead Shark, we cannot evade it. So the only... we've got... we also have the Longbow, which is going to be Dexterity or Ranged plus your Strength. So that's actually going to be better for her, because that's going to be a D8 plus 3 plus a D4 as her base to get a 9. So starting at a 5 to get a 9. We're not going to discard that. But since this is a henchman, Jarell's going to help her out and play a blessing on the gods. So that is now going to give her um, two dexterity dice. So that's going to be 2d8 plus 3 plus 1d4. So to use this, she, the reveal effect just means uh, this is the card I'm going to use. I'm gonna, you're just saying I'm going to be using this card. So 2d8. 1d4 plus 3 to make this check. Alright, that's 1, 2, and 3. Not great. 7 plus 3 though, so we do in fact make the check because the, com the check was a 9. So that's a good thing that we... Right, let's switch back here. Check was a 9, so we made that. And then since this was encountered in the deck, the bottom uh, power comes into effect. If defeated, you may immediately attempt to close this location. Okay, now what's the closing cost? Well, oops, we're not at that one. Banished an ally. Well, unfortunately, she doesn't have an ally now because we played that ally and I didn't expect to encounter the uh, henchman so quickly. So she has no way to close this location. Which is too bad. Mm. So the only other way to close the location, if you can't close it when the henchman is encountered, is to run the entire location out of cards. So it's kind of a bummer. But uh, we we did at least get the henchman out of there. He's no longer in part of the deck. So he goes back into the henchman's deck. Uh, she doesn't have to reset. So we're going to pull a card off for Jarell. And she will encounter... Oh, I forgot to reset Jarell's hand. Oh, no, wait. That's not right. Sorry. She used that blessing. I forgot. So she doesn't get her hand reset. Let's just shuffle this up. Oh, that was my mistake. So she's going to be operating with just four cards this turn. Anyway, we're going to keep going through this location. Armor. Buckler gun. Checked requires a dexterity of range 5, then a constitute fortitude 5. So we have to do two checks to come to get this. That's probably going to be tough. Let's see. Well, she can do both for sure. Alright, dexterity. So dexterity is a d10, and then she has to make... Um, well, let's just deal with the dexterity first. Switch back over to the dice rolling view and roll a d10. And the result comes up a 2. That's not very good. So we didn't make the first check actually. So, with the, so we can't acquire this. So that's a bummer. Can't acquire the buckler gun. So the, what happens with uh, armors that you can't, or anything that you can't acquire, goes back into the box. It's banished from the game. She could explore again um, by getting one of these allies gone, but we're not going to do that. We need to keep those allies so that we can get through the rest of this. Uh, she could explore again by using a Blessing of the Gods. Which isn't a terrible idea. But I think we're just going to pass back to Lyrion for now. Alright, this one's a different blessing. This is of Gorum. This isn't going to matter though because Lyrion doesn't have any blessings of the gods to use. So we pull out the location card. It's a spell. Check to require Wisdom Divine 6, which she 
does have actually a wisdom d12 plus uh, d just a straight up d12. She can't use spells though. Uh, neither of them can use spells, so there's really not much point in even trying to get this. Well, that's not totally true actually. You can you can use and acquire you can acquire a spell and have it for the duration of the scenario, even if you can't have the spell type, and then you would just treat it as like a scroll. So let's see what this does. Discard this card to add 1d6 to any check. So, I mean, it doesn't hurt to try. It's a uh, wisdom, so that's a d12 for her. So let's roll a d12. And it's a 6. So we get it. We'll just acquire that right into her hand. Uh, after playing this card, so he here's what happens, right? After playing this card, if you do not have the Divine Skill, banish it. But you get to play it that one time. Now what you can't do is go from one scenario to another with a card of a type that you don't have any um, support for in your deck. So she wouldn't be able to keep this from this scenario to the next scenario, but we might be able to use it. Um, we might be able to use it, it, it during this particular scenario. Powderhorn, search the weapon, a deck for a weapon that has firearm trait. Oh, okay, so that would let us get one of her ranged weapons. Discard this card and search for the deck for a weapon that has firearm trait, add it to your hand, and shuffle the deck. After playing this card, succeed at a craft eight to recharge it instead of discarding it. Well, we're gonna use this because I'd like to have one of her other weapons. We're not going to succeed at a craft 8 because we don't have the craft skill. So now what we need to do is search this for a firearm. And there's one right there. And we're going to put that in here and we're going to say stop search. Oops. Oh, rats. It pulled that card into there and I didn't want it to. It shows the card powder horn, right? Right, and we sort of stop search. So I guess we need to put the discard pile over here, maybe, so that we don't have that happen. All right, so what do we get? A pistol. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your dexterity or range skill, plus 1d6. You may additionally bear this card to add another 1d10, which is huge. Bury means you put it under your character card. Um, it's not out of the game, but it's not. it is out of the play for the scenario. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. So it's just just a reveal. Yeah. So that's a better weapon for her. Let's switch back over to Jarell. Blessing of Gorum. We're we getting down there on the location deck here. Oh, another barrier. Look out, duty. Check to defeat Wisdom Perception Six. Uh, she has a Wisdom of D eight, so it's possible. The difficulty to defeat this barrier is increased, blah, blah. We don't have that. If defeated, you may look at the top card of the barrier's location deck. If it is a monster, you may immediately counter it. If undefeated, your ship is dealt one structural damage. Leave this barrier face up on the location deck. Uh, characters at this location encounter this barrier as their first exploration each turn. All right, so we need to beat this then. So she's going to have to use a blessing to make sure, give her 2d8 to roll. It's a perception, not survival. All right, so yeah, we'll switch back over to that. And we're going to roll 2d8. That's one, two. Well, we got an eight on the first one. And so we, we beat it. It's very good. That goes back to the barriers deck. Oh, and then we may immediately uh, check this. If it's a monster, it's not a monster. So put that back. All right, and that's going to be her turn. Oops. Got to remember to switch back to the right view. That's her turn. So we'll reset her hand. And it's another blessing of the gods. Well, she's getting really lucky with drawing blessings of the gods, isn't she? Whereas Lyrion hasn't had a single blessing. Okay, now this one's a really good one. Uh, if you did have a blessing of the gods to use, because it's two dice to a combat dexterity check, and they both use dex for their combat, so. 
be good if Lyrion had that, but she doesn't. But that doesn't matter because she's not actually going to have a combat encounter here anyway. Potion of Fortitude. Banish this card and choose a character at your location to succeed at a Fortitude check. So we have to do Intelligence Craft of 4. She's got an Intelligence of D6, so it is possible that she could get this. Let's roll a D6. And it looks like it's coming up 6. So she gets that. Oh, and sorry, I... So here's something I needed to do last turn. She would have had to reset her hand size back to um, four, so she would have needed to discard something. I'm going to, well, uh, I mean, the only thing that makes any sense to discard is, well, so I kind of like the, this aid thing. Let's just add one Z6 to any check. That's better than, she, I mean, she has no blessing right now. So let's discard this. So then we would have acquired this into our hand, this potion of fortitude. Now we have to discard something as well. So we're going to discard the potion of fortitude because I don't think there are any fortitude checks anyway. And that's the end of her turn. So we switch to Jarell, and she. There's only two cards left here. Blessing of the Gods. All right, so Blessing of the Gods you acquire immediately. There is no check to, to get this. So she is loaded up on Blessing. So actually, she's going to use that Blessing to explore again. And this is the last card, and it is a Cutlass plus one. And yeah, as a swashbuckling pirate, she's definitely going to want to get that. A plus one weapon is very important because it has the magic trait on it. And there are some things that you will encounter that have the magic trait. Uh, or that require your check to have the magic trait. So this is strength or melee plus 1d6 plus 1. Uh, hmm. Oh gosh, I forgot even to get into their powers down here, so we may have been playing somewhat wrong. Okay, let's, let's look at those quickly because we do need to be aware of that. For your check that has or is against a card that has the finesse trait, you gain the skill melee is dexterity plus 2. If your check has the swashbuckling trait, you may reroll. Go away, text thing that I don't want. Uh, if your check has the swashbuckling trait, you may reroll one die on your check. You must take the second result. And she reduces structural damage to your ship by one. Okay, so if for a check that has, or is against a card that has, finesse trait. Right, so this is a finesse weapon. So that would apply. So she would be able to use it. What it's saying is that instead of using your your strength check, she could use melee, but melee is being redefined as dexterity plus two. So for her, that's d10 plus two, which is much better than the d6. So yeah, we definitely want to try to acquire this. Strength melee uh, eight. So she's only got a d6. So to do that, we need to put in a blessing at least. She's gonna roll two d6. Uh, and Lyrianne really wants her to get that weapon too, so she's going to use this aid card. It says discard this card to add 1d6 to any check. So now she's rolling 3d6 to get an 8. Just not guaranteed, but it's better odds anyway. So that's 1. Oops. Apparently I threw it badly. Alright, we got it already. Right. It's just 3d6. So she gets to acquire this directly into her hand, and she has just improved her deck by adding a plus one weapon to it. So that's it. I mean, you can't have a better result than that um, in your first scenario. That's great. So basically, this will stay in her deck um, until she loses it or decides to upgrade to something else. So very good. And now that was the last card in the deck, so she can attempt to close it. She has to banish an ally. We will banish the sailor which means he goes back to the box. And that location is closed. On closing, draw a random ally from the box and recharge it. Okay. So now we're gonna shuffle the ally deck. Draw one. And it's gonna get recharged, which means it goes onto the bottom of the deck. So we don't know what we got. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not good. We'll find out at some point. 
And now she needs to reset her hand. And she gets another weapon. So we've got a rapier. And yeah, we've got two rapiers actually. We've got, got plenty of weapons right now. So that's good. First location closed. Took longer than we would have preferred, but that's okay. If you were the only character at this location, add 1d4 to checks attempted to make it this location. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that effect, but they weren't the only character. There were other people there. So we've closed that location, and now we're, uh, we're going to see where the ship effect comes in, because we're both at the same location, and we're going to move the ship. Um, when commanding the ship, when you would roll for plunder, you may discard a card from the Blessingless deck to choose the type of plunder card. Okay, I don't think we really care about that. But the ship does allow us to both move to the same location. Now let's see, we've got, so we've gone through nine cards in the Blessings deck, so it's about a third of what's in there. Um, and we've only closed one location. So we might want to split up. Let's see, this is the one where the Hammerhead Shark all the time. This is the one that does damage to the ship. Also, that's a really tough closing check. These are both tough closing checks. I guess we're just going to say we're both moving over to here. It was Jarell that closed that, so it's back to Lirion. And Okay, well that's a great card to have if we were actually trying to close this already, but we're not. Alright, so it's not the start of our turn, because it's the start of our turn. Oh, wait, it is the start of our turn, because that ship moved. Let me see. No, it was Lyria. It would have been Lyrian's turn. She moved the ship. So it's not the start of the turn, so we don't have to encounter the shark. Alright, now. So that means we get one, one free exploration here. And a Blessing of Aristotle. Very good, if we can acquire that. Dexterity 4. She's got a D8. It's just Dexterity, right? She's got a D8. We'd really like to have that. But she... And I don't think we're going to use a Blessing of the Gods on it. We'll just take our chances here. Get a D8. Oh, maybe we should have used the Blessing of the Gods, because we didn't acquire that. No, that's too bad. So. It's kind of weird. I guess we got there after a fashion. We didn't make that. We don't have a way to explore again, so she's going to reset. And now she gets a blessing of the gods. Well, that's good. Okay, now Jarell, on the other hand, does have to encounter the Hammerhead Shark. Start of your turn, summon an encounter Hammerhead Shark. So it's combat 9, and it cannot be evaded. Now she's got plenty of weapons. So we're going to use the Cutlass plus 1. And we're going to use her ability that says for your check that has, or is against a card with a finesse trait. So her card does have the finesse trait. You gain a skill melee is dexterity plus two so that's a d10 plus two plus 1d6 plus one so d10 plus 1d6 plus three all right d10 and a d6 uh oh that's not great so we failed that check actually so that's a total of four that we got on the check plus three so that brings us up to seven so we failed the check by two, which means we take two damage. Uh, we'll put it. On, we'll take it on the rapier, I guess, because we've got two. Well, that was definitely unfortunate. And we still get to have the turn. I mean, we still get to explore because we, you know, just because you lost the check doesn't mean you don't get to do that. Magical buckler. Check to acquire a Constitution Fortitude six. She has a constitution, she has actually fortitude, so it's d6 plus 2. Not a great chance to get this, because it's a 6. Um, I don't think she has, really cares to get it anyway. But, there's our d6. Oh, plus 2, so we do acquire it. 
that would have been nice to have to soak up the damage from the shark. Uh, recharge this card to reduce combat damage dealt to you by two. If you are proficient with light armors, you may reveal this card instead and play another armor. Oh, we are actually proficient with light armor, so this is not a bad thing to acquire. Um, she could explore again. I don't think I'm going to. I don't. I don't think we're really at that point yet. We're we're too panicked. We draw the conch shell. Reveal this card to add one d6 to your perception check. Discard this card to examine the top card of another location deck. After playing this card, succeed at a perception seven to recharge instead. Hmm. Very interesting. All right. Switch back over to Lirion. The blessings of the gods. Now she has to encounter the hammerhead shark. She's going to use her pistol. So that's dexterity or ranged plus 1d6. Her dexterity, her ranged is a d8 plus 3. And alright, so d8 plus d6 plus 3. d8 d6. Let's roll better than that. Oh. Well, there was one of these that was already here. So actually, she only gets a five plus three. Gosh, I'm <laughs> I really should be using blessings on these checks. Um, so she's in at an eight, and it's a nine, so she has to take one damage. Uh, take it on the sap, I guess. I don't think I care that much about the sap. Well, I need to stop taking damage. Need to stop taking damage. Okay. And we encounter a mercenary. Difficulty of check is increased by the adventure deck scenario. What's your one? And you, know, you can see that by just looking at this adventure B. So there's no number. He's a 10. Well, I guess this time we'll be smart and use our blessing of the gods to go along with that pistol. So it's going to be 2d8 plus 1d6 plus 3. One, oops, I forgot to switch over to, yeah, we got this guy. It's 20 right there. So he goes away. Back into the monster's deck. And we don't have a way to explore again, so she's just going to reset. Gets another blessing of the gods. And another blessing of the gods. Okay. Switches back over to Jarrell. Blessing of Abadar. Which is two dice to any check to defeat a barrier. Okay. Well, if she comes up with a barrier, that would be great. She does not. She comes up with Shackles Pirate Combat 9. If the check to defeat has a swashbuckling trait, add 1d4 to it. Well, it will. So that's nice. Get another die. So same thing here. We're going to do dexterity, which is a d10 plus 2, plus a 1d6, so it's a plus 3. So d10 plus d6 plus d4 plus, thir plus 3. And I have to remember to keep switching back and forth to our die roller here. All right, d10. D6 and D4 gives us a total of 12, which even without the bonus beats this guy. Because he was only a 9. Flip him over, he goes back in the monster deck. There's only 6 cards left here. Oh, shoot. I think I forgot to encounter the hammerhead shark for her, didn't I? We gotta do that check. Uh, same same check then, basically. So D ten plus D six plus three. No, in this case. Oh no, yeah, plus three. All right, D ten. Oops, hold on, I forgot to clear it. D6. Alright, that's fine. 
we beat it that time, so it doesn't matter. Blessing of Phrasma. Um, <clears throat> discard this card to add two dice to that check. Oh, when a spell is played. Yeah, I'm not playing any spells, so we don't care about that. Now she has to encounter the Hammerhead Shark. All right. D8 plus 3 plus a D6. She's going to use a Blessing because we don't want to miss this. Uh, you know what? We're not going to. Actually. D8 plus 3 plus D6. There's a D8. There's a D3. Consists of 7 plus 3. Consists of 10, so we defeat him. Very good. Now she gets to encounter. Oh, a dragon pistol. Firearm ranged piercing elite. Check to acquire dexterity ranged craft nine. All right, so she can use her ranged. So d8 plus three. Again, nine is not very great. We're going to use a blessing for this because I think this is an approved weapon. So it's 2d8 plus three to get a nine. So starting at a five. Yeah, I mean, it's not great, but it's it's what we've got. All right, D8, D8. Well, we got an 8 on the first one, so we're all set. We've got a 13, and we are, in fact, going to acquire this lovely dragon pistol. For your combat check, revealed this card to use your dexterity or range skill, plus 1D6. You may additionally bury this card to add another 2D6. If you do not bury this card, roll 1d6 or 1d12 if you are proficient with weapons. On a 1, shuffle this card into your deck. Interesting. Recharge this card to add 1d6 to, and this card's traits to another character's check at your location. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. So happy to have that. And she does this. Well, she could explore again. Yeah. What's the closing cost? Oh yeah, it's just another ha hammerhead. I don't think we will, because I think we, she wants to have that blessing for the close. So switch back to Jarell. Now Jarell has to encounter the hammerhead. So we're back at a d10 plus d6 plus 3. Uh, d10 plus a d6. Uh -oh. She's going to miss again. Plus three. Same thing. So she takes one point of damage. However, this time we have this buckler. Recharge this card to reduce your combat damage dealt to you by two. So we're going to do that. And to recharge, remember it goes on the bottom of the deck. And she's going to be a little bit careful here, actually, because at this point, she only has seven cards in the deck. And cards, yeah. Your cards are your life. So if you ever have to draw a card out of your deck and there isn't a card to draw, you die. So it's pretty drastic. Um, anyway, she made, she's through that. Now we'll do this. And it is a marine combat eight. The difficulty to increase her blah, blah, blah. If the check to defeat has a swashbuckling trait, the damage dealt by the marine is increased by two. If the damage to defeat has a swashbuckling trait, the damage dealt by the marine is increased by two. Weird. Okay. Well, it does have the swashbuckling trait, so he's going to potentially hurt me more. It's an eight. Uh, we're going to take our chances. Stick with that d8 plus d6 plus three. No, 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 wait, she's a d10. Sorry. d10 plus d6. All right, we've got a 12 there, even without the plus 3. So we got that sorted. This guy is gone. We haven't seen the henchman here yet, so we're getting down there in the deck. There's only four cards left. I just moved to the whole board, and I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, WASD, I guess, moves the whole board. All right, what did we get? A boatswain. Recharge this card to examine the top. 
card of your location deck, discard this to explore. Add the swashbuckling trait to your non-combat checks. All right, let's use this guy. We want to use him to uh, examine the top card of your look. Oh wait, she can't because she just reset. So sorry, that's that'll have to be next turn. Blessing of Abadar. All right, Lyrianne now has to fight the shark, so she'll use her new dragon pistol. And that is a D8 plus the D6 plus three. D8, D6. That's 11 right there, so we already beat him. So that's good. And we got to be getting up to the henchman here. Oh, instead, it's armor. Cloth armor. Uh, constitute fortitude 2. I think we can do that. That's a d6 plus 1. Let's switch back over to our die roller. Let's use the fancy flaming die here. We get a 3. So we acquire this. When you acquire this card, you may draw a card. Cool. I may draw a card. I don't have to draw a card. In fact, I'm not going to draw a card because that's just going to chew through my, my deck. Banish this card to reduce all damage dealt to you by zero. Or you can bury it if you're proficient, which I am. Well, that's pretty good, actually. Um, hmm. Eh, she's not going to explore. But we're going to need to be picking up the pace here. What's this one? Blessing of... At your kick. Uh, discard this card to add two dice to any check to defeat a villain or henchman. Oh, that one's awesome. Yeah. But this is up in the Blessings discard pile, so it's not like we can acquire that. So we're back over to Jarell. She has to fight the Hammerhead Shark. D10 plus D6 plus 3. D10, D6. Oh man, she keeps rolling horribly. <laughs> uh, so a six, that's actually two damage now. I'm gonna have to discard the conch shell. I gotta keep the weapon, I guess. Guess we'll get rid of the boat swing. All right, <clears throat> we really do need to stop taking damage. I hadn't switched it back, so my apologies. Be more careful in these fights, or we're gonna end up losing. Please be the henchman. It is not. Constrictor Snake, combat 11. If the check to defeat has the cold tra trait, add 1d6. Well, we don't have that. If undefeated, bury the top card of your deck and return the Constrictor Snake to the top of the location deck. Uh. All right, well, we're definitely going to use a blessing. She's going to use a blessing on herself. So that's going to be 2d10 plus d6 plus 3 to get an 11. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's just what it's going to be. 2d10 is 1, 2, and a d6. Which only came up with 1, but combined, they're 15 plus 3. So, Constrictor Snake is defeated. Yeah. And now she has to reset. Okay, so now is where it gets dangerous. Because her hand size is 5. And she no longer has 5 cards in her deck. Let's just have some armor, though. I think it's quite likely that we might fail this um, scenario because we're running out of blessings. We've only got one location closed so far. But that's okay. That's just the way it goes sometimes. And this is the first time playing them with these two characters or, or even this, this um, set. So, right, back over to Lurian. Dragon Pistol. Uh, D8 plus D6. Plus three to get a nine. 
I don't know how I'm missing to get it on the board sometimes, but it was a 10 anyway. So, defeats that, pulls this out. Oh, rats. It's the villain. Okay. Well, I think it's almost certain that we're going to lose this scenario now. And I'll explain why. Because even if I defeat the villain, as long as there are open locations, um, he can escape, or he will escape to one of those open locations. It still matters that I beat him, though, uh, because of the way that he escapes. Uh, so let's see. He may not be evaded. All damage is poison damage. He's a combat 15. Just a straight up combat 15. Does my friend Jarell have anything useful? Not that. This card down to your melee combat, no. Uh, she does not have anything useful, I don't think. So, it's going to be down to Lyrian on her own. Well, she's obviously going to have to use the Blessing. Because this is a check is a 15. So what's better? Probably the Dragon Pistol. And we're going to take the extra step to bury it just to make sure we beat this guy. So this is Dexterity arranged. So we've got uh, 2d8. Actually, what's this one? You may additionally bury this card to add another 1d10. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting about these checks for the pistols. Oh well. That's the thing, there's a lot of checks to keep track of. Yeah, let's... Alright, so we've got the blessing, so that's 2d8 plus 3. Plus a d6, so then we're going to bury this card to add another 1d10. So 2d8 plus d10 plus d6 plus 3. And to bury, normally you put under this card that I have just overlaying on the image, so I'll just put it over here. It doesn't go into your discard because those can actually come back. It was buried, just gone for the game. Okay, 2d8 plus d10 plus d6. One, two, three. There we got it now already. Okay. So we've made that check, which is good. He still gets to escape, but this location automatically closes, which is nice. So we don't have to deal with the smurfolk person. And it just closes, there's no effect. But he gets to escape. Okay, and how we do that is we take him and a card from the Blessings deck. And hopefully pick them both up at the same time. Shuffle them. One goes into one location that's open and the other goes into the other open location. And then we shuffle these. So he's now in one of these two locations. And I, I forgot, of course, we weren't going to encounter a henchman, were we? Because he was in there. So, yeah, whatever. That was Lyrian. So she gets to draw a card. And she gets a Master Gunner. That helps for the ranged combat check or exploring. Okay, that was her turn. Now it's Jarell. So we are still starting our turn here, so it still has to do the check against that, which she seems to have a lot of trouble with. Um, yeah, D10 plus D6 plus 3. Does this guy help? We're not... Oh, we are doing a melee, actually, and we are on the ship, because we're always on the ship unless it's anchored. All right, so he's going to give us another D6, so that's... D10 plus 2D6 now. D10 plus 2D6. That's one, two, what? Something really weird with the way these dice roll. Okay, well, we beat it this time anyway. And he gets recharged. 
now she's going to just move them both on the ship. I'll just move over here. Well, she can explore. Hey, couldn't couldn't be any better. Getting the hammerhead shark. So this is the henchman for this location. So if we beat him, then we can attempt to close the location. Right. Well, she doesn't have an extra die now. So it's just going to be a d10 plus a d6 plus 3. And, and Lyrian can... Can't she help her? Recharge this card to add 1d6 and this card's traits to a character, another character's combat... No, that's at your... Oh yeah, we're at the same location. Yeah, so she can use... She can recharge the dragon pistol to give her a d6. So she'll do that. That's going to be a d10 plus 2d6 plus 3 to get a 9. Oops, and I'm going to just totally destroy the entire setup here. Alright, d10 plus 2d6 plus 2d6. There's 15 already, so we got it. Righto. Hammerhead Shark. Now, because the, hench the villain can be here, we actually have to look at the whole deck. Uh, succeed in Intelligence or Knowledge 7. Which she's not going to be able to do. She has an Intelligence of D4. So we better shuffle this. get a d4. I'm trying to figure out what to do here. She can't close this, so it's going to stay open. And I guess we're just going to stay here. That's, that's all there is to it. So it switches back to Lyrion, but Jarell does get a card. Gets another cutlass. Yeah, she has to be really careful. She only has three cards left. Well, so we did shuffle this already. So it is Lyrion. It's a spell. Intelligence, Arcane, Wisdom, Divine, Six. Which actually she can get, potentially. Because her Wisdom is a d12. So, d12. And we get a two. So no, we don't acquire. I think we better use this guide. Discard this card to explore your location. We already have this. Uh, actually, we don't have the swashbuckling trait by default, do we? So we'll add the swashbuckling trait. That may be important. So she'll explore again. And it's a boatswain, which has an ally. Charisma Diplomacy 9. Got a d6 for charisma. No blessings on the table, so no way to improve that. I don't think we're going to acquire this guy. See you later, Boatsween. And that is her turn. So she will reset. And she gets an ally. And it goes back to Jarel. All right, we have nine cards left in the blessing deck, so four, four turns, I guess. Caden Kalin. Constitution, uh, strength or constitution? Okay. Not too bad. Alright, Pirate Captain, before you act, recharge a card. Let's see which one we want to do. Recharge this card. Da, 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 da. This, uh, or defeat a, or to defeat a Bane or a ship. Or 1d8 if it has a pirate trait. Yeah, I think we're going to keep that. <laughs> Let's um, ditch the cutlass. Okay. That difficulty of the check goes up by the adventure deck. You may not play allies that have the pirate trait on this check. Well, that's okay, because we're not going to play any allies. After you act, the pirate captain deals two structural damage to your ship. Mm. Okay, but she has an ability that it reduces one. Okay, so we can deal with that once we get that. Combat check 12. So a d10 plus a d6 plus 3 
and then we're going to use this eye patch. Recharge this to add 1d4 in the swashbuckling trait to your check to acquire an ally or to be defeat a bane or a ship or 1d8 if it has the pirate trait, which it does. So we're going to get a d10, a d8, a d6 plus 3. d10, d8, d6. And we rolled very well. Very well indeed. And now she's going to deal two structural damage. Well, Jarell takes one on her ability to reduce structural damage to your ship by one. And Lyrian, who has the more cards in her deck right now, will additionally discard a card to reduce the other damage. Um, I think we'll discard the deck hand. Okay, so we didn't, there's no structural damage to our ship. So that's fine. And the pirate captain goes away, back into the box, and back over to Lyrian. Old Salt. Charisma Diplomacy 7. Get a D6. We have no blessings on the table. Cannot do it. Sorry, Old Salt. Back to the Allies box you go. She doesn't have a way to explore again, so just gonna reset. Now we've got a blessing on the gods for next turn. So we know he's not in this deck, but we need to clear this out. Otherwise he would just escape to it. We're gonna have to get really lucky. I don't think it's I don't think it's gonna happen, honestly. Um anyway, we're back over to Jarell. It's a barrier. Difficulty defeat is increased by the adventure deck. Each character may attempt at a check to defeat this barrier. Each character may recharge any number of allies. For each recharged ally, each ally recharged at 1d4 to that character's check. Each character that succeeds may add a random item from the box to their hand, then banish this barrier. Hmm. Okay, so this is um, this doesn't have any real negative effect on us, which is cool. Could actually help. All right, you can recharge. Alrighty. So Drill encountered it. It's an intelligence knowledge, which she only has a D four. So you can't. She could make it with two D four. So we'll recharge the swab. Two D four. One a two. Oh well. We, we definitely didn't make it. We did not make that check for Drell. Drell gets nothing. Does Lyrian want to check? Want to try it? She doesn't have any, but she can't even make it. Actually, her intelligence is a D six, and she doesn't have any allies to recharge. So nope. No items for us, but this just goes away because there wasn't anything else to do with it. Alright, that was Jarell's turn. Uh, luckily, she has Master at Arms for next turn. But for this turn, it switches back to Lyrian. And we get the Blessing of Milani, which is two dice to any non-combat dexterity or wisdom check. See if that's of any use. <sighs> Another spell. So wisdom is a D12 for her. So D12 coming up, and we get a six. And what did she need? She needed a six. All right, we acquire it. <clears throat> Discard this card to evade a non-villain monster and shuffle it into an open location of your choice after playing this card, blah blah blah. Okay. The only way she can explore again is with Blessing of the Gods. So, and we really do need to explore again, so she's going to do that. Oh boy, more cloth armor. Constitution, Fortitude, I mean we can't not get it, right, because our Fortitude 
is plus one and you can only roll one or one to six so yeah we automatically acquire that don't really need it but we acquire it anyway all right she has no way to explore again so now she does need to reset and she's going to drop down to four so ditch that and it switches back over to Jarell. Another barrier, treasure map. If defeated, examine the top card of the location deck. If it is a boon, you may add it to your hand. If undefeated, you may banish this barrier. Intelligence, knowledge, wisdom, survival, six. Well, she has, she has survival, D8 plus three. Eight plus three. Here we go. Yeah, we got it. Examine the top card of your location deck. If it is a boon, you may add it to your hand. And it is not a boon. <laughs> it's a zombie. Meh. She can explore again. Discard this card and swashbuckling trade. Oh wait, that's just straight up discard, isn't it? She has so few cards, I don't think we really want to do that. I I know that the odds are definitely against us for completing this scenario, but... Well, I mean, this is only the first game, so if she dies, she dies. I guess that's one way to look at it. So explore, counter zombie, use a combat 9. Zombie is immune to mental and poison. Have the damage dealt by zombie rounding up. If undefeated, each character at your location summons and counters a zombie. Oh, great. So she needs to beat him for sure. All right, same old thing, right? D10 plus D6 plus three. D10 plus D6. Come on, we need bigger rolls. There's your 10. He's only a nine, right? Yep. Zombie to go back in the box. Okay. There's only one card at this location, but I have no way to explore. So it switches over to Lyrion. And she's not gonna, is she gonna be able to make that check to close it? I don't think we're even gonna be able to close this place. Uh, Blessing of Aristotle. Would be nice to acquire this though. So dexterity is a d8. Uh, it's just d8. Straight up d8. Well, that's all we've got for a chance. So let's hope we get it. Because this will be a very good card for her. And we got a five, and we needed a four, so we do acquire it. That's going to help us close. Succeed at intelligence or knowledge seven. Her intelligence is d6. That doesn't help. This is the only card that's going to help us. And it only gives us one die, so it's going to be 2d6 to try to get a 7. 2d6 for a 7. And rolling a 1, it's not going to help. So that didn't have any modifier on it, so we didn't in fact make that check, and we, ex we discarded that to try. So here we are, we're, st we're stuck here, I don't think we're getting out of here. Well, we could leave, but it's, there's no point, because he would escape here, even if we encountered him. So I think it's pretty well a foregone conclusion at this point that we're not going to get out. I mean, she can't make the check. She, she can't make it at all. She only has a d4. I guess we are going to move over here, just because, why not? We might encounter something. So this is her turn still. A barroom brawl. Difficulty to defeat this barrier, blah blah blah. Each character that's location encounters this barrier. Each character that does not defeat the barrier is dealt 1d1 damage plus adventure deck number. If any character that defeats the barrier is defeated. Strength, melee, dexterity, 5. Alright, so she's a d10. Oops, I think I just switched to the wrong one. d10. Run it up there and. She rolls terribly. 
she doesn't make it, so she gets dealt a damage onto the cut. Oh wait, recharge this card to deal. Is it combat damage? Yay. Dealt one, if any, in combat damage, yes. So we can use this. Recharge this card to reduce combat damage. We will recharge this card. Lyrian gets a chance. Strength, melee, dexterity. So she's got a d8 for dexterity. D8. Comes up a seven. We needed to get a five, so we do make it. She makes it and that gets this that defeats the barrier. But Jarrell has no way to explore. And goes back to Lyrian, who finds, of course, a Dora Barbarian, the villain. He may not be evaded. Combat 15. No blessings on the table. I probably shouldn't have done this. That doesn't help me. The Dragon Pistol. I guess we're going to have to go for broke with the Dragon Pistol here. Um, we're going to do the 3d6. Alright, so dex plus 3d6 plus 3. Dex is d8. One, two, three. And we did it. Right? So I want to make sure there wasn't something else out here. It's a 12, yeah. Alright. So we did beat him. Which. Can we do this? Actually, we. Oh man. We, we might be able to pull this off. Hmm. Nah. Uh. Let me see. We beat him, so this closes automatically. We don't have to make the closing check. This is the villain, so he can't be in this deck. And there's only one place to go, which is here. So this was... Okay, so this gets buried, actually. Now, now she has no weapon. Oh... Please get a blessing. No. Potion of glibness. That's not useful. It switches to Jarell. She moves us here. Now we don't know what's in there. We know what she has here. This is to beat a bane. This is a bane. He doesn't have pirate trait though. So she's only gonna get one D four off of that. And whenever playing a weapon that doesn't help. She doesn't have any way to add to the damage add to it. So it's pretty unlikely that we're gonna do this. Let's see. Strength of melee plus one D six plus one. You may additionally discard this card to add one D eight. So we'll have to do that for sure. So that's a d10 plus a d8 plus a d6 plus 3. And we've got to remember this. <clears throat> we can reroll a die. Alright. So it all comes down to this. d10 plus a d8 plus a d6. small rolls. Oh, there we go. Plus 3 is 15 damage. And that defeats Adaro Barbarian. And by the skin of our teeth, we succeed at this scenario. Uh, that's awesome. That is totally awesome. <laughs> so wow, with one blessing left in the, de in the blessings deck, we, and when we 
we encountered this guy three times. We beat the villain three times. This is that was awesome. I I was really thinking we were not going to make it, but that is great. Okay, so super cool.